Hello guys and welcome back to our fourth video of this series. In this video, I will be covering the week four topics. Myself, Dhruv Janakala and I am your maths mentor as you all know. Also, your qualifiers are coming close only three to four days apart. So, we are also going to conduct some PYQs uh, videos and all the formulas and notes will also be revised in one video in coming days. So, before we begin, let's go through the quote of the week by Anonymous. Just like polynomial, success in life requires persistency, determination and courage to add value to every variable. That's why never give up and always keep trying hard. This is the page distribution table. You can use it while accessing the notes. To begin with index first, in this uh, week 4, polynomials is been covered. We will first go through polynomial functions, then classifications of polynomials, operations on them, then division of polynomial, it is uh, important. Then characteristics of polynomial functions or graphs, you can say. And then let's say about some theory about zeros of polynomial and one important concept of multiplicity. So let's begin. First, what's a polynomial function? Uh, there are two possible definitions for this. Both are same, uh, just little different. We will be going with the second one. A polynomial is an algebraic expression in which only the arithmetic is addition, subtraction, multiplication, natural exponents of variables. These are expressions combined of different exponential forms of single variable like x cubed plus x squared plus 1. It's a cubic equation like that. These all are all polynomial functions. One example of n degree polynomial function has been given. As you can see here, a n raised to x n plus a n minus 1 raised into x to the power n minus 1 and goes till a 0 where x raised to 0, where x raised to 0 is 1, so a 0 is constant. So decreasing order, you can also write it in increasing order, doesn't matter, but what you can observe this here is from a x to the power n to x to the power 0. Variables are present. Also the greatest degree which is present here, n x, and which is in the power is the degree of the polynomial equation. Let's say you have a cubic, then the highest order degree or the degree of the equation is 3. The highest power is the degree of the equation. Also, this polynomial is from the domain and range of R to R. You can call it a one to one for now. Then the second part is the classification of polynomials. Uh, well, there are three ways in which we can classify polynomial. First are based on number of variables like only x or x, y, x, y, z. And then second is the degrees of the polynomials, cubic, quadratic and all. And then third is the number of terms present. Is it only one term, two term or three terms? So first, let's see the classification based on the number of variables. That is polynomial in one variable. This is the most common one and also we have studied this in schools and all then come where one example is as you can see here 5x cubed plus x squared plus x it's very common then comes the polynomial in two variable in these two variables can be spotted also you can observe that here the degree would be four in this one the reason is because apart from constant all the variable powers are to be added so keep in mind the powers of the variables are to be added not the powers or means not the variables then comes the polynomial in more than two variables. These are normally polynomial in multiple variables. Here all sorts can come, base and minimum is the three variable and then it can expand to n number of variables. The second is based on polynomials degree. Let's say you have only coefficients and no x terms are present. Then these are gone constant polynomials. For example, 5, 6, e and pi. These all are constant polynomials because the x term is absent. Then comes the linear polynomial, which are formed by linear variables like 2x plus 4 minus 3x. In this, only x has power of 1. In quadratic polynomial, x has the greatest degree or power of 2. Whereas in cubic polynomial, the greatest degree or the power is 3. And quartic or even biquadratic, both are the same names for x to the power 4. Next, we have classification based on number of terms. Monomial is the most common one with one term present in a polynomial, which are x cubed, 10 to the x to the power 10 phi, all sorts of where only one is present, one number or one constant or one variable is present. Then comes the binomial, in these two variables are minimum, or you can say a variable and a constant is present. Like this, where 10 to the power, x to the power 10 plus 10 is present, and here 6x9 minus 6x squared is present. These all are binomials. Then last one is the trinomial, where three terms are present. Doesn't matter what the terms are, it can be constants, variables, exponential constants. The three terms should be present. Like the last example, you can see x squared plus x plus e, where first two terms are variables, whereas the third term is a constant. Then comes the operations of polynomials. Here, the basic three operations are addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Division will be covered in the next slide. 
the reason for me covering these three first are because as you can see let's see we have a equation of px here this notation means summation for whom you don't know uh it's used when all these values of uh, k from 0 to n are substituted and then added together as you can see there is first summation of a base k and x to the power k which is px and then there is qx which is nothing but j equal to 0 to m summated bj uh, into xj x raised to j where bj is the constant with respect to the power of x also here you can observe when you will add p and q x to the power k will come out as a common term remaining will be come in bracket with both the constants and the summations base will be starting with zero as usual and the upper part of the summation will be represented as which of the following is greater in m and n the reason is because when you will take m as your power let's say m is greater than n then we will take m and also you will get a question that let's say m is 3 and n is 1 for now so this when you will substitute here you will see that uh, the part of n which is uh, x square and x2 which is not actually present but in this when you will keep it as here 3 here it will print here x cube and x square terms will also come which belongs to this part but actually they don't exist so in that term the constants so in that case the constant of ak will be substituted to 0 cancelling the x to the power cube and square in this equation this all will not come directly in our question and you don't have to pay much attention to this either i'm just giving you a high notation of all the possible formulas and uh, we will also see how these are applicable in questions ahead then come the same subtraction all stays the same only minus will come here and the constants will get subtracted that's to the power k is constant the greater value will be kept on the top in multiplication it will be same the only difference is that here m and n are to be added the reason is because there is possibility that x to the power something and x to the power something in both the cases may be a multiple of m plus n that's why we are adding here and uh, here summation will be accepted in two parts first you will do summation for this part and then apply the summation for the outer part now division of polynomial one of the important aspects because direct questions will be coming from this part normally the division of polynomial is by monomial binomial any other polynomial when divided by other polynomial for example you have a px which is divided when you divide it by divisor z through x then you will get a question question can be anything that's mediator and then you will get some form of reminder which is not divisible by the divisor so division algorithm you can find these things because direct division of equations is not possible So step by step, let's see. First, we have to arrange the terms in descending order of the degrees. That's how ideally in standard form we write from n to the uh, x raised to n to x raised to 0. In that same way, you have to write. Also, the missing coefficient should be mentioned at 0. Let's say you have uh, x cubed plus x1 is your equation. It means polynomial function. Then in that case, you have to write uh, 1x cubed plus 0x square plus 1x. The reason is because in this case, while doing division, you need to mention every single uh, raised to power because that affects the solution. Then you have to divide the first term by the first term of the dividend by the divisor's first term. And the monomial that divides it will be kept in the quotient. And the same as normal division, whatever will be after subtraction, reminder will be followed down. Then multiply, you have to multiply the monomial with the divisor and subtract the result as I said before. Then you have to check the, the in next check the uh, degree of the divisor should be lessened. Because if the degree of the divisor is not lessened, then the division will, won't successfully come out. Therefore, and if it's really uh, lesson, then you can repeat from this step two and again do the as how you do the normal division in that way and you can do. We will do some questions to understand it more clearly. Okay, so let's move to the next part, which are the characteristics of polynomial. There are mainly two characteristics that you have to keep in the mind that these uh, polynomials are smooth curves, means they don't have a sharp corners. If you find that any of the graph, let's say this graph here, you can see that there is a sharp corner here. So this is not a uh, polynomial function. This is a function modulus, but it's not a polynomial. The reason is because it cannot have a sharp corner because this part becomes undifferentiable, which we'll cover in the later, later weeks. Then the second property is that this should be continuous. They should not have any kind of breaks in them between. Like how you can see here, if you see the lower part of the graph has been broken down in this corner. That's why it's not a polynomial function. Whereas you can see that it doesn't have any broken parts, neither is it uh, sharp at any corner. Even this, these are bent, but these are not sharp at any corner, neither are they broken. That's why option A and D are smooth and continuous. 
That's why these are polynomial, whereas C and D are not polynomial functions. That's the only two properties you have to keep in your mind. The last part, zeros of the polynomial functions. This is just theory, but the last point is important. So I will start with it. The concept of multiplicity. What's this? It's a new term. Maybe something related to multiplication. It's correct. In simple words, let's see you have, after solving a polynomial, you get this answer. X minus A raised to cube into X plus B raised to 4. Multiplicities are of factors. There can also be a question, what is the greatest multiplicity of the polynomial? In that case, the factor with the highest power is the main, your motive here, and the power is the multiplicity. 4 is the multiplicity of the factor X plus B, and 3 is the multiplicity of the factor X minus A. So, in short, you can say that power raised to a factor is its multiplicity. And then some common notations like all the functions that touch at x axis use us the zeros of the uh, graph, which are also known as the zeros of polynomial. Then x equal to a is a zero of the polynomial, whereas x minus a form is the factor of the polynomial. Uh, when these equations are equalized, these functions are equalized to zero, we can find the y-intercept where x axis becomes zero, and these are classified as the zeros of polynomials. Then normally we will be covering quadratic functions uh, using quadratic formula in our most of the cases. Also, when there are cubic and four, quadra, four degree polynomials, we can just break them by using a heat and try method for cubic and for four degree, you can break them into quadratic equation, then simplify it by using your normal methods. That's all theory, uh, nothing more that you don't know about them. Let's start with the questions here. You are asked to add two polynomials. Here we have given general form where upper limit is given three and here upper limit is also three. So it's the same and these two forms are there. So we can use, for here you don't even need to buy hard anything, you can just go by logic. When you will add this, what are the common factors? X cube will come out because power three is there and then the X three plus B three, which are the common constants will come in. You can even do it by yourself. These are the basic things. You don't actually have to follow formula. This formula will be used mainly when you are asked given this one, a3 plus b3, a2 plus b2, a1 plus b1, a0 plus b0. Then you have to use this formula. Or you can use the second method or common method which we will do in the second question. Here you have to just add these two polynomial. Either you can follow the same procedure or you can either follow this method or you can dash directly add it. You know x cube plus 3x cube is 4x cube. And you can save time because in exam you are not asked to follow the procedure. You are just asked to give the answer. So I would recommend you to directly solving in the exam and for understanding you can just go through them then subtraction here also you can it's the normal subtraction method you have done we are given a qx and asked to subtract it from a px first we'll write the px on the top followed by qx on the bottom and do the common subtraction you will get this answer at the last these are basics i don't think i need to explain how you are doing subtractions then here is the multiplicity multiplication of polynomial. Here px is x squared plus x plus 1 and qx is x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we have to find the products. Either you can do direct your method using foil method. If you don't know what's foil method, first take the term of this variable. First take the first term of px and multiply it with each term of qx as how you do in normal multiplication. Then take the second term of qpx, then multiply with this. Then take the third term of px and multiply. This is the uh, normal method, which I would recommend you to do during your qualifier exam. And also you will be doing that method only. And for theoretical purpose, we will learn that first you have to take a variable, which is here x, k we will take because uh, we are going to substitute k as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and until square. So 0, 1, and 2. So here you can see 0 is, k is substituted with three values. First 0, then 1, then 2. Same AK, you can see the coefficient of every term is 1. And when you will see in BK means here, you can see first term coefficient is 1, second term coefficient is 2, so we will write here 2, third term coefficient is 1, so we will write here 1. And then you have to make form pairs, like when K value is 0, then A0, B0, means multiplication of both constants, coefficients, which will calculate to 1, because both of them are uh, 1, 1. Here you can see a, when a is 0, it's 0, and when b is 0, it's still 1. So 1 into 1 is 1. Then when k's value is 1, you can see possibilities that um, a1 and b0. You can, just let me show you here. Uh, here k is 1. So you have to take first the value of this, like when a is 
case a's value is zero, that is time one. Then again, when a's value, b's value is zero, then that is also one. Here you have just to make the pairings and then add and see what are the results. And then just put that results in uh, de decreasing order of degrees. Like x to the power 4 will be given 1, x to the power 3 will be given 3, x to the power 2 will be given 4, x to the power 1 will be given 3, and x to the power 0 will be given 1. Next question. Here we are asked to find the value of px upon qx. So here first we will write our dividend. Then write our divisor. This uh, multiplied by x to the reason to multiply by so that we can cancel the first term. This will be cancelled. Also, this term should be multiplied by x entire divisor and then subtract it. You can see that second term also gets cancelled. After third term, only uh, minus x cube is left and this comes down. Then you will take minus x, multiply. Your goal is to cancel the first term in every step. By doing that, you will and then uh, get directed towards zero or either some reminder. Here you can see after repeating the process, the so uh, question that you get is x cube minus x minus one. So option C is your answer, which is the value of px by qx. Next here is the same question as previous one. We have to Subtract something from the px so that it's completely divisible by uh, the qx. Just do the same division and at the end, whatever reminder is there, subtract it from the px. So at that, it gets completely divisible by the qx. As you can see, we will get 4x minus 3 the answer. I am not explaining this because you have to practice this because in exam, you have to do it by yourself. I will only tell you the main procedures here, whatever turning points are there that you have to keep in your mind. And apart from that, these all are just basic divisions which you have to do correctly. I will again depend. First, write dividend, write your divisor, then take a value of something in the question such that when multiplied with the divisor, it separate at least the first term of the equation of dividend. By repeating this process, yes, you will eventually be lead to your answer. Next question. In this question, we are given a PF. We have by dividing a polynomial Px with another polynomial Qx, we get Hx. Okay. So Px divided by Qx gives Hx as the question and Rx as the reminder. So, what is the maximum degree of the reminder? This is the theoretical question. Option D is the correct answer. The reason is because in our degrees, at least less than the degree question. As you have seen in the previous slides, we have mentioned that the degree of the pair should be less than that degree of the question. Then the second question is that if the degree of the Px is less than the degree of Qx. When your dividend has lesser degree than your Qx. Your solution is still possible. The reason is because you can divide, divide x by x squared. Your result will be minus x to the power minus 1, but still it's possible. That's why answer will become, and this is a multiple question. So the value of your hx, which is your uh, uh, question will be 0. And at the same time, your degree of your reminder will be same as degree of your px, because it's 1 less than your question. That's why. And our reminder should be, degrees should be less than the uh, quotient's degree, therefore. Next question, we have given a polynomial and another polynomial. In this question, both of the polynomials when divided by x minus a, they give same reminders. So we can just substitute 2 in both of these because 2 is a solution of these equations. So just substitute 2 in this equation. And eventually you will get a simple uh, linear equation in with term a and just go and solve for it and you will get your answer directly whenever a question comes where same reminder is said to be delivered after dividing by any factor then just substitute that factor or that uh, number of factors in it and then you will eventually get two to three equations if that uh, factor is a quadratic then you will get two uh, equations then just substitute both equation in and you will eventually get the answer of a see that and uh, when you will substitute two in both the equations they will eventually get down to two simple equation of 4a plus 25 and 2a plus 22. And this is a solve the equation, you will get your answer. So that's it guys. Thank you. And also be sure to like, share and subscribe and also be updated on the channel because in upcoming days, we will be giving PYQs for maths 1 and also complete revision of all concepts for maths 1. Thank you.